history is being made right here, right now. On Sunday, October 15th, 2023, Mojang just casually announced something that the Redstone community has been begging for for so long that we honestly just dropped it and accepted that it would never happen. That thing is the Auto Crafter, or as it's officially called, the Crafter. I honestly just couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it, but it gets better. So just three days after the announcement, on October 18th, Snapshot 23W42A came out, allowing us to play with the crafter already. Now I'm recording this on the 20th, which means this thing's been out for two days already. And I'm sure that the people in the community have come up with some really cool things over the last two days, but I've been purposely avoiding anything crafter related until now so that I can record my genuine discovery session for you right here. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the interface. Click to disable slot. Yep, yep, this was in the video. Oh man, they make it so easy. All right, so let's craft our first thing. So maybe like an iron block. Oh, okay. So you can't just take it out. I guess you need to hit it with a pulse, right? Oh, oh, and it shoots it out. It doesn't just drop out, it shoots it out. Okay, hold on, let's try that one more time. Oh, maybe not that far. Okay, so it's a little bit randomized, but that is super interesting. So of course it can be fed with a hopper as well. So when I... Okay, so left to right, top to bottom is how it populates. So I wonder what would happen if I put a bunch of iron ingots in there. Okay, so it only goes one at a time. Then it starts stacking. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. Let's go. Yeah, that's super nice. Okay, so can it be fed from anywhere? Let, let's see. Okay, so we know it can be fed from the top. How about the side? Yep, definitely. Perfect. I'm guessing also from the back. Yep, looks good to me. Obviously from the other side as well. Nice. Oh, and another thing to note, it spits out all of them at once. So this uncrafts into nine iron ingots and it spits all nine out at once. You don't need to pulse it nine times. That's that's pretty nice too. And how about the front? <laughs> Will that work? Oh, it actually does work. And then you... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, I don't know how useful that is. I wonder... Hmm. Nothing immediately comes to mind. Okay, so can it be inputted into a container? So... There we go. Yep, directly into a chest. That's nice. Okay, one more question before we move on. So, how about a cake? So when a cake is crafted using a regular crafting bench... Hold on, let me go ahead and try that. Okay, so here we are in the regular crafting bench. So we've got our milk there, egg in the middle, two sugar, three wheat. And when we make the cake, it leaves three empty buckets left over. All right, let's see what happens with the crafter. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. So it spits out the cake and also, hold on, let me just make sure that my inventory is clear of buckets and three buckets. So if there are any leftover items, it'll spit those out as well in the same pulse. That's, that's pretty cool. All right, now for the comparator test. So we saw during Minecraft Live that this can actually interact with comparators or rather comparators can read off of it. So let's see how it behaves. So I just went ahead and filled up this hopper with iron ingots. Actually, let's go ahead and just fill it all up since it will technically fit. And okay, nine. Oh, <gasps> interesting. Wait, so no matter how full it gets, it stops at nine. Oh, they really found a lot of ways to make this really, really convenient. And so I spam this, spam it, spam it, spam it. Okay, yeah, and it stays at nine. That is so cool, I love that. Okay, so what happens with a more restrictive recipe? So, oh, you can actually see, yeah, if you look over to the right where I'm circling with my mouse there, yeah, as you disable these, they'll actually count as full. And then when you put that in there, it goes to nine. So no matter what you're crafting, it'll kick out a signal strength of nine when it's done. Man, that's so nice. 
I really hope that they don't make too many changes to this first iteration, because uh, I'm, I'm sure they will, and uh, hopefully it doesn't get too much harder because this is really, really user-friendly. Oh, and of course, obligatory through a block. I mean, surely it can read through a block, right? Oh yeah, totally. Oh, one more thing, of course. <laughs> How does it react when a hopper is underneath it? All right, let's see. Ah, so it takes it out of here, but it doesn't take it out of here. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. So I don't know how many of you know this, but there was a mod that actually implemented auto crafting into the game, but it was very, very simplistic. It was actually a lot harder than this. And in order to do a recipe like a sword, for instance, what they would need to do is actually put in a couple of dummy items like this. So it goes iron ingot, dummy, dummy, iron ingot, dummy, dummy, and then a stick. And then they would take out the dummy items and then be able to craft the sword. So because we can disable these slots like this, this particular crafter, if it's only set up to craft swords, then this is really, really easy. But if you wanted to use this as an all-purpose crafter, so use the same crafter to craft all kinds of different things, then you would potentially need to use dummy items, which this will support because now it can be pulled from the bottom. So let's say for instance, if this was filtered, right, by eggs, and then I unlock the hopper, you can see that they are pulled out and we have the sword. That's pretty nice. Another thing, obviously the crafters can be chained as well, but can they be chained without a hopper in between them? I'm sure they can, so let's go ahead and hit up an iron block. Let's see what these nine ingots actually do. Okay. Oh, they instantly fill up like this. That's cool. All right, but what happens if there's no room? Ah, it just like spits it out like this. Okay, okay, all right, yeah. Okay, another thing that I wanted to test out was something that Moyang showed during their event, which is an armor equipping station, except the armor is stored in bulk inside of these crafters, which is super, super cool. We've never been able to store so much armor so easily like this before, and it also shows me, actually, first of all, let's, let's see if it works. Okay, so I'm not wearing anything. I step through here. And I'm wearing a full set of armor. Okay, so this is really interesting. So this implies that even though the crafter and the dispenser were powered at the same time, the crafter actually finishes its operation first before the dispenser fires. Because you can see the dispensers are actually just empty. So there you go. That is really cool. Okay, so just for the sake of science, I wonder if the same thing happens when you power the dispenser directly like this. Yeah, the same thing happens. So this has priority. Either that or it fires first. I do know that uh, the dispenser has a little bit of delay on when it fires, and I think that might be the reason that it works. So you can see... Yeah, there we go. In fact, the crafter lights up when it gets powered, right? So if this lights up before we hear a click, then that's confirmed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is instant, and this one has... I think one tick of delay. Uh, I don't have these things memorized, but I think I'm right about that. Either way, this is really, really cool. Very useful information to just keep in the back of your head. Hold on a second, I just had an idea. You've all seen this, right? So basically we have a bunch of minecarts inside of dispenser, and when you click this button, it will automatically dispense that minecart and send it on its way. With this, we either had nine minecarts stored in here, or we had bulk minecarts stored somewhere else like this. But now with the crafter, it could be a lot different. Uh, let's see what I can come up with. All right, hold up, would this be enough? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so we have just 64 minecarts stored up right over here and we click the button and uh, yeah, we just send minecarts out like that. And of course, if you wanna store a crazy amount of minecarts in the back, you can just have a chest full of iron blocks instead. And then whenever I click this, there we go. It should have actually replenished. Yeah, you can see it has another <laughs> minecart ready to go. So I click this button and basically if it falls under nine, then it will basically craft another set of nine <laughs> iron ingots like this. So hold on, let's see if I can... Oh. <laughs> that okay <laughs> okay hold up let me do the math on this <laughs> okay
Okay, so according to my calculations, if everything is full, so this one, this one, this one, and this one is completely full to the brim, then this tiny little space right here is enough to store 6,976 minecarts. So you'd be pushing this button 6,976 times <laughs> before you run out of minecarts. Sorry, I'm laughing because this is this is madness. It's crazy. Now that's theoretically. I'm not 100% sure exactly if it would work that way because, oh, because let's say when this thing runs out and you click the button, then you'll get a little bit of doubling up and eventually, will they actually reach equilibrium? Oh yeah, it does, a little bit. Uh, how many was that? Honestly, I lost count and I hate doing mathematical proofs, so I I'm just gonna say that it's good for almost 7,000 minecarts. Let's just say that. Okay, so another idea that I've had is just fully randomized fireworks. <laughs> so you push a button and you get a completely randomized firework on demand. I think that would be pretty cool, but uh, you know, I'm just here to experiment with the crafter itself. So maybe that'll be a future video or something. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Also, the tile drops are beginning to annoy me. Actually, this is an interesting thing. It better still be able to spit out stuff even with tile drops off, right? Oh, good, thank goodness. I also asked you guys in a community tab for experiments you'd like me to run, and you guys had a lot of really good ideas, most of which won't be making it into this video, but I definitely want to do a follow-up, so make sure to let me know if that's something you would like to see. One idea that I really wanted to toy with, though, was the idea of a counter. So now knowing that you can use a comparator to read off of a crafter, and it only goes up to 9, so you have 0 through 9, and then it should repeat, it should actually be really easy to make a very, very compact base 10 counter. So I'll take a stab at it right now. So yeah, basically, oh, wait, oh, wait, you could place it like that too. Wait, wait, hold on a second. So that means, yeah, wait a second. Wait, can you, can you place it facing down as well? Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> it really is the little things in life. Okay, so where were we? Uh, crafter, yeah. Okay, comparator output off of that. We probably want a dropper to be feeding it. Probably another crafter like this. Hopper going back into here. We'll fill this guy up with nine ingots. Seven, eight, nine. Or perhaps more, uh, depending on how fast we want this to count. And I reckon if we take another output out of that, and then let's go ahead and yoink that guy like that. Actually, wait, no. How about I move this this way and do that like that? All right, so we can't use iron ingots because they have intermediate crafting. Yeah, so iron ingots is a no-go for this. I'm sure redstone would work, actually. Let's see. Yeah, nothing until... The last thing, yeah, works perfectly. All right, so we stocked this up with nine redstone dust, and let's start feeding pulses into it like this. Hey, Editing Jazzy here. So I realized that this might actually be quite familiar to some of you, and that's because Crafty Masterman actually shared this exact same design for a counter in a recent video of his. That said, I did not steal this design, nor did I know about the tweet that he made before I recorded the segment. As I said, I purposely avoided everything crafter related for this. We just both happened to independently come up with the exact same design, which in truth is actually like, it's pretty basic. So yeah, if you've already made a comment about this video, I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that's all I have to say about this. Back to the video. And... Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Yep, 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 yep. And since it was powered before the dropper, right, it didn't actually spit out its thing. So now it's ready. So the next time that this thing clicks, there we go. And it should come all the way through. 
So now we should have one coming through because this will fire first. Yeah, 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 let's just see. Yeah, look at that. That is so sick. Okay, hold on. Let me go back up to eight again. Okay, so click the button. Nine. Okay, it gets held in there. Zero gets reset. Now the block of redstone is in here. One. Oh, wow. Literally, four block, base 10 counter. That's wild. All right, I'm officially excited. This is gonna change redstone. All right, I'd say that's a pretty decent little introduction to the crafter. I am beyond excited for this new change. I mean, it is the biggest thing in redstone since the observer, maybe the biggest thing in redstone ever added to the game. Of course, this is just a snapshot, so things can change in the future, but honestly, the current iteration of this thing is absolutely incredible. I, I haven't been this giddy about a new redstone feature in, in forever. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed and hopefully you learned something with me. This thing is absolutely incredible. I can't stop saying it. I can't stop smiling. Uh, wow. Just, just wow. And that's all I've got to say. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. No zoom.